Hey, what's up? All right, all right. I mean, as long as you're here, that's what matters. All right, now, you you know, you know what's going on, right? You have no idea. You've just heard of the fights. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a brief rundown. This is hockey. 101 with your boy. All right, so I've got like a bunch of lists because I actually kind of thought you would do this to me. So I've got a bunch of snick, sticky notes ready with all the words that you could possibly think you need. So we're gonna start. You're cool, right? We're doing this. All right, cool. So listen up. Face-offs. Now, every period will start with a face-off. After every stoppage of play, there will be a face-off. There you go. A face-off is basically when two of the centers, or most of the time centers, meet up at one of the face-off circles. There are five in the neutral zone. We'll talk about that later. And two in the offensive zone and two in the defensive zone, which we will also talk about. So delay of game, we're just, we're just going all over the place. Delay of game is when the puck goes over the glass or you intentionally knock off the posts. And there's like one more reason. I guess if the ref warns you, you have too many skaters and you don't fix your problem, then they'll call it, whatever. A uh, high stick, okay. This one. So, high stick is basically when you lift your stick up and it hits someone in the face. <laughs> yeah, that actually happens a lot more than you would think. Just like a lot more of these penalties that we'll talk about. Um, Offsides, oh my gosh, this has changed a couple times through my life. You're getting all this, right? You got a, no a notepad, right? Uh, you'll remember it. Um, offsides, yeah. So this is one that's actually changed throughout my life, like I said. Um, yeah, because of Matt Duchesne just being completely offside on one of the plays while he was still with the Colorado Avalanche. They had to bring in a new rule. But basically, all five of your team has to be in the neutral zone or just not in the offensive zone before the puck carrier enters the zone and the puck has to cross the line first. If you do a 360 at the line and your feet go in, and you can see white before you can see the puck inside the zone, that is an offside. Coaches often will use offside or challenges for goals to be taken back or to review so that goals can be taken back. All right, icing. There used to just be two, no, there used to be two line icing and it didn't make any sense why my friend taught me that way. Basically, two-line icing is when you're just outside of the center ice line. So let's let's deal with that for a second. Right down the center, there's a line, and then there's two blue lines, and then down at the goals, there are some red lines, basically separating the big rectangle from the little half circles. All right, so icing is when you're past that center line closer to your goal and you send it deep and it crosses that goal line on the other side that is technically an icing now players get away with it sometimes of not completely crossing the re the middle line the center line but usually they're pretty decent at calling those if they feel like it Oh, we'll talk about that in a minute. The if they feel like it calls. Wah. Okay. So, the next two, overtime and penalties. Yeah, super out of order. I know. Overtime is after the 
three 20 minute periods are over if the game is tied it goes to an overtime in the regular season it is three on three for five minutes and then it is a shootout in the postseason it is continuous five on five until somebody scores and those will be in 20 minute increments and that is what we are going to tonight it is a playoff game so if it goes to overtime i think there's been as long as like six overtimes i know this year there's been a double overtime almost went into triple yeah penalties are either two minute five minute or ten minute infractions depending on the severity um and then a double minor for high sticking is like a newer thing yeah i i still haven't figured that one out why it's a double minor but I guess it's just a new rule in the NHL. Uh, so penalties can include cross-checking, which people get away with a lot of. You remember to bring your jersey, right? Okay, it's in the car. All right, cool. Um, yeah, so cross-checking happens all the time. Just look in front of the goalie and you'll just see people going ham sandwich on... <laughs> some spinal cords uh we call we like to call it an accordion when someone just goes like that or like that for a cross check <laughs> other penalties include like i said the high sticking there's tripping there's hooking which is when you get your stick up into the hands of the other player and basically if they are if they get messed up in any way from that or if the ref just sees your stick up in their hands they're gonna call that nine times out of ten in the regular season but in the postseason if it's not gonna affect play that much probably not yeah i'm gonna be honest they're gonna probably put away the whistles in this one so just uh be ready for some prison rules hockey I know there's going to be some big hits, some things you're going to question, and trust me, when you question those, I'll be doing the same thing, because I don't know. <laughs> that, it's something I'll talk about a little bit, you know what, I'll talk about it now. It's called putting the whistles away, and that's basically when the refs do not want to call anything, or they've it been expressly told to really dim down like it has to be an egregious penalty for them to call it yeah all right penalty shots and we're going to talk about breakaways at the same time penalty shots is when there's one player that has a clear lane to the net and none of the other team is there to be able to defend them but they are behind now if they get in like a trip or something right there then technically the ref will say there was a clear lane and it is a penalty shot power play let me talk about that first power play is any other time there's a penalty you're gonna be on the team who got tripped or hooked or whatever slew footed <laughs> that team is the one that's on the power play and that means they have five guys while the other team has four or in some situations it's five and three or four and three or three and three four and four it's wild all right now breakaways breakaways are basically <laughs> breakaways are when a player has a clear lane to the net but they don't get tripped or hooked or anything it's just them one on one with the goaltender the other team's goaltender i should add yeah you getting excited i'll tell you more i'll tell you more um shootouts shootouts is basically just a bunch of breakaways the puck is dropped at the center line face-off dot and then the ref blows the whistle and it's one-on-one -on -one against the goalie alone there's no defenders it's just one on the goalie we usually call it one on oh i'm just saying one on one so it makes a little more sense yeah 
Yeah, because one on O doesn't doesn't sound extremely right. Oh. Um, but what else is there? There's those, and that goes three rounds, I think, right now. It used to be five, but I think right now it's three. And basically, if one team, it's a best of three. If one team scores two goals and the other team scores one out of those three shots, the team that scored two wins the game. Yeah, if they score all three, they win the game. Now, if they're tied after three shots, it'll keep going to the fourth, the fifth, the 17th shooter. Yeah, it could literally go on forever, but usually it ends within either the first three or the first 10. Like I said, that's not something we're going to get to see tonight because this is playoff hockey, so it's going to be continuous overtime, which means five on five the entire way through first 60 minutes, next 60 minutes, next 60 minutes. If it goes 180 minutes, that'd be crazy. I just seriously doubt that it does. All right. The Stanley Cup, that is what these playoffs are for. The NBA has the championship. The... NFL has the Super Bowl. I'm not sure other sports, uh, so soccer, football. <laughs> I don't know why I put air quotes. Soccer slash football <laughs> is the World Cup. And all the other sports, I don't really know much about any other sports. The Stanley Cup is their big thing. All right, hopefully we can see our team win tonight. Who are you going for, by the way? I gotta, I gotta decide whether, whether I can take you or not. Fair enough. Because you had their jersey. We might have to fight on the way back. Just letting you know now. All right. No, I'm not joking. Anyway, putting the whistle away, we went over that. Ref, you suck. Now, this right here is everything. Every single game, you were going to hear ref, you suck chants. And if you're not a part of it, then you are against the crowd. And last time I checked, we are the crowd. So if you're against the crowd, you're amongst the crowd, and that just, that doesn't add up. Mm -mm. Yeah, if people are saying ref, you suck, don't question it. Refs suck. Um, next th the next big thing you need to know is everybody hates Gary Bettman. Not sure why, you know, like I've seen some questionable decisions. He's been the leader of the NHL for like ever, several decades. And basically when it comes to draft night and everything, we all like to boo him. Now that's down the road a little bit. When he comes out for the Stanley Cup to award it, we also boo him. Whenever we see Gary, we boo him. General rule of thumb, if you see Gary, you say boo. Yeah. All right, we're going to get into a little bit more niche stuff here. The goal crease is that blue thing that goes like this back at the goal line, which if you remember, I said there's the center ice, the blue lines, and then the goal lines at the far ends. So the goal crease is right in the middle of both of the goal lines. There, you can tell because it's very blue on the inside, and it's a little half circle, and usually it has a goalie in it, unless if the goalie is pulled, which happens when the team is down by one or two goals, sometimes three if there's enough time. And that's all I gotta say about the goal crease. Goalie. We just went over that. That's the person who stops bucks. They're a little crazy. A little crazy little crazy. Yeah. No. No, no, no. Think about it this way. They voluntarily get in front of a one-pound puck traveling 
at speeds up to like 111 miles per hour. <laughs> Who does that? Yeah, it wouldn't be me, no. Skaters. So, there's five skaters that are on the ice all at once for one team, not including the goalie. One is the center, that is the person who takes face-offs, that is usually the one who's quarterbacking the play. And then you have two wingers, one on each side, the left wing, the right wing. And they are not usually quarterbacking, but they are integral to pulling off the plays. And then you've got the two defensemen whose primary job is usually to stop any advances from the other team, especially when they get close to their goalie. But sometimes they like to get up and play and play a little offense too. Right. The trapezoid. So you remember those goal lines, right? There's a lot here. Um, there's a little trapezoid. How do I put this? It goes like this and like this behind the net. If the goalie is to go outside of that trapezoid behind the net, there's like little areas in the corner in both corners. That is a penalty. And I believe that's actually a delay of game penalty. I could be wrong. I'm not sure what they call it. It doesn't happen that often. But yeah, it's an immediate two minute minor penalty. All right, offensive zone and defensive zone. So let's say the Buffalo Sabres are playing the Toronto Maple Leafs. The Buffalo Sabres offensive zone is where the Toronto Maple Leafs goalie is. Their defensive zone is where their own goalie is. And what separates that is the neutral zone, which is the place in between those blue lines right in here. You also find the center ice line there. So let's say if Toronto's goalie is over here, that is the offensive zone. If Buffalo's goalie is over here, that is the defensive zone. All right, I know it's a lot, it's a lot, but you're a champ. You are a champ, you're, you're taking this in. And honestly, if you don't remember all this, you know you can just ask. Like, I'm not gonna sit there and make you learn a whole sport right before we go to the game. It was super cool that you won these tickets though, off that radio contest. That was so sick. And then, and then you invited me, you know me too well. Yeah. No, you're good. You're good. So let's talk about goal must full. Okay, goal must fully cross the goal line. You need to see white. If there is zero white in between that goal line and the puck, the puck is technically not considered a goal. It must completely cross that goal line. If it is one millimeter on that goal line, it is not a goal. I've seen very close calls where it ended up being a no goal because there was just a smidgen of that puck on the goal line. Yeah. And then let's talk about the point. The point is that place right by the blue lines. Basically, there's a little space right there. There's two big circles two big circles and then there's a little bit of space until you hit the blue line that space right there is what I consider the point that's where you're gonna find your defense in the offensive zone most of the time you're gonna find them up there ready for a shot or ready to cycle it cycling is basically where you pass around pass around <laughs> you know some of this stuff I didn't even like write down I'm just like going off for you. I hope I hope you appreciate it. Uh, of course you do. You don't know, you don't know me. You don't know me. <laughs> Alright. Top players. Now this doesn't none of these players are really on these two teams except one. And these players are Crosby, who plays for the Pittsburgh Penguins, Wayne Gretzky, who played in the eighties and early nineties. And I think late 70s too. Mario Lemieux, who played in the 90s into the 2000s. Uh, Alex Ovechkin, drafted in 2005, 
or 2006 one. It was 2005. It was a year before Crosby. And he was drafted number one overall to the Washington Capitals. And then we get into McDavid, Edmonton Oilers, 2015 first overall pick. Austin Matthews, 2016 first overall pick for the Toronto Maple Leafs. He will actually be at this game. Nathan McKinnon, Nate Mack, uh, first overall pick for the Colorado Avalanche, I think. 2017, I, I could totally be wrong on that one. I'm fully ready to admit that one. And Kale McCarr, who was oh, I got fourth. I might, I think I'm confusing him with Miro Heiskanen, who plays for Dallas. But Kale McCarr also plays for Colorado. Avalanche, yeah. Um, yeah, a couple players on these two teams that we're going to see. You got Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, Kelly Yarncroak, Michael Bunting, John Tavares, Ryan O'Reilly, um, William Nylander. I can't believe I forgot him for this long. Nola Chari, Alex Kerfoot, Sam Lafferty, <laughs> David Camp. And Zach Aston Reese. And that is pretty much the whole team, forward wise. And then you got Morgan Riley, Mark Giordano, Philip Gustafson, TJ Brody. And I didn't keep as good of track this time. <laughs> uh, Jake McCabe is a new addition that came in this year. And I feel like I'm forgetting, like I'm Justin Hall, Hall of Famer. Uh, if you knew the Toronto lore, that would that would have killed. And uh, I feel like I'm forgetting someone, but let's blow past it. We'll see him on the ice later. Their starting goalies are Ilya Samsonov and Joseph Wool, with Matt Murray as the third stringer. Or you could like say it other ways, like Joseph Wool is starting. I don't think uh, Matt Murray as backup though is potential. All right. Oh, jeez. I almost forgot Buffalo. Uh, Buffalo has... <laughs> let's try and do this. Tage Thompson. Casey Middlestat. Jeff Skinner. Wow. I haven't watched a Sabres game in a minute. Uh, Jacob Bryson is a defenseman. Dylan Cousins. J.J. Paterka. Isaac Rosine is in the AHL, six overall pick, if I remember correctly. Rasmus Dahlin, Matthias Samuelson, Owen Power, Devin Levi, Craig Anderson, just retired, UPL Ukapeka Lukonen, or Lekanen. Hey, I've heard it both ways. We just call him Lou. <laughs> yeah, Devin Levi's the rookie, though. But he did look fantastic in the games he played this year. Uh, I feel like I'm forgetting the whole left side. Kyle Pozo, Zemgis Gergensen. Man, I should literally just like go over the whole week one day because some of these names are wild. <laughs> I'm going to stop there. We'll see the rest of the game, okay? All right, let's, let's get back to like the basics, okay? Cross-checking. Um, basically that is most of the time legal, except when it gets excessive. Delayed call is a, so when there's a delayed call, it means there's a penalty that is being called, but the other team has to get possession. So as long as the team who the call is against, the team that's not getting called, as long as they have possession, they can send their goalie in and it'll become a six on five until the other team touches the puck and gains possession. <laughs> I almost forgot this. Um, the rest of the league hates Toronto. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Them too. Especially the Habs, yeah. Bruins. <laughs> uh, how do I even put that? I don't even think the Bruins respect the Leafs, if I'm being honest. I don't know. Wes McCauley. 
since he's refing this game, I am 99% positive that the Sabres are going to win. And uh, if you remember a couple years ago, he was the two minutes for fighting. He was that guy. Yeah, it was popular on TikTok for like a week. Uh, any NHL 23 or gel is the game we all suffer through every year and play and spend money and then regret it immediately because we don't get any good players. I'm not speaking from experience. Don't ask. <laughs> All right, this is actually, this is the cool part. Okay, this is what I really wanted to tell you. This is almost like a little bit of alphabet. And I'm going to go through it. Apple means assist. We're going through this, some of the lingo, yeah. Bar down or bar down ski is when it hits the crossbar. The crossbar is that top bar on the goal post. So the goal goes kind of like this. It's that post up top. It's when it hits it and then bounces straight down. Smelling salts is basically something that you just wave in front of the nose and the players do it all the time. And it really wakes you up. If you've ever seen like highlights of dudes just doing smelling salt, it's just like, wow, I'm awake now. But like more extreme than that. Crunched means into the boards usually goes along with it. it just means they were hit really hard against the boards usually maybe they fall down snipe is when snipe is when they just rip it rip it means like shoot it and they kind of like pick a corner or pick a pocket and they just hit it from the wildest of angles but it was intentional beauty is kind of like that was a sick play, but we just call it that was a beauty. Uh, rocket. <laughs> so there's two meanings for rocket in the hockey world. We could say that shot was an absolute rocket, which means it was a really hard slap shot, which is when you kind of go like this and wind up and do the follow through thing. Or it could mean a very handsome woman. Right. Yeah, no. No, yeah. We're, we're going to skip past that one. We're going to talk about the bucket next, or the bucky. As some people like to put it, that is the helmet. Selly is when you celebrate after a play. My favorite one is the archer. Down on one knee, of course. Top chat is when you get that top really like a third of the net but more it's more like the top sixth of the net just like probably that much from the top crossbar down you would call that top jet chirp is basically trash talking <laughs> it is the nhl's version of trash talking i know there's so much this is low-key why the nba is more popular but once you kind of know all this stuff, it's a really cool sport. Now we're going to talk about a clapper or a clap bomb. That's just a hard slap shot. Dangle is, how do I put this? It's, if you, you know, like football, like soccer. So we call it like dirty dangles, but for them, it's kind of like footwork Deking, you know, uh, we've got like the Datsuk flip, we've got the toe drag, the windmill, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'll point it out to you when we're there. Uh, the flow is when they got a really nice hairdo rocking and it's long in the back. <laughs> Filthy is like that was, it's, it's a lot like beauty. Gino. <laughs> Gino means goal. Uh, Gino is also the nickname of Evgeny Malkin, from also from the Pittsburgh Penguins right now. And uh, last time I checked, he is a score. Oh, you haven't seen that clip? I could just show it to you. Let's finish up. I'm showing you that clip after, though. 
Uh, muffin is just like a super soft shot. It's not very hard. It's kind of just like lazily shot. <laughs> Sweater is a uh, jersey. And yard sale is when you hit someone so hard that they start, that you see their gear just go flying. It could be a helmet, it could be gloves, it could be sticks. And also it happens during fights. When people drop the gloves, sometimes sticks get like thrown and helmets are like thrown that way, sticks that way, gloves backwards. <laughs> and then there's like line brawls where it's everywhere. That's when it's a true yard sale. But yeah, you feel like you're ready? All right, probably over ready, yeah. <laughs> so, awesome. So you wanna, you wanna hit it? Yeah, we should get some food on the way. All right, I'm, I'm down. That sounds really good. All right, let's go. <laughs>